Well, 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 it has finally happened. Nicholas CEO Mark Russell is retiring at the end of this year and being replaced by Michael Loeskiller, who is obviously the current president of Nikola. Obviously, this news came out a week ago, and I have not been able to cover this on my channel. So I decided that this video, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on this news and how this will actually affect Nikola's business in the long term, because believe it or not, it actually will have a pretty big effect in the image around Nikola Motors and also the execution ability of this company. Because as we all know, the CEO role is the most prestigious and the most important role in any tech company, even if the company has a president and a very active board of directors. So those consequences are exactly what I'm going to discuss in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing I want to address is why exactly has Mark Russell decided to retire? Now, obviously, I have no clue on why he has made this decision, but I can obviously speculate on why he might have made this very, very odd decision. First of all, I think one of the th key things we need to address is the fact that Mark Russell has been in the tech industry for a very long time. He's been serving as the president of Worthington Industries, which is another multi-billion dollar steel and manufacturing company for around five years. And then he obviously joined Nikola in 2019 as president. And then he was promoted to the role of CEO when Trevor Milton departed from the company in 2020. And since then, obviously, he's had a very tough role in the company because he's had to essentially turn around the entire image of Nikola. And to be honest, he's been pretty successful doing that, in my opinion, because Nikola now is realizing revenue. They have sold real trucks and they have also dealt with the SEC infringements and all these subponas and probes that were being conducted against Nikola. We all know that Trevor Milton is on trial and he's expected to go into trial, I think, next month or so. And so it's pretty obvious that a lot of that stuff has been put behind Nikola, which is a pretty tough job to do for a tech CEO who has absolutely no knowledge of the legal system. And meanwhile, all that stuff has been happening. He's been able to lead Nikola to a level where now they're realizing revenue. They've been able to raise more money. And they also got that new shareholder approval vote, which is such a big deal in the success for Nikola in the future. They need to be able to raise money to grow. And although in the short term that might have a negative effect on the stock price, in the long term, that is exactly what you need for a company like Nikola to be able to build its moat and its competitive advantage. So overall, I would say Mark Russell's stint at Nikola has been very successful. As for addressing some of the reasons why he might be leaving the company, I would probably think it's for personal reasons, because obviously it's been a very difficult time for him over the past two years, even though he's been leading this business and executing at a very good level alongside Kim Brady, bringing in new and new deals and contracts and LOIs with companies and dealer networks. He still received a lot of criticism and backlash for his association with Trevor Milton in 2020. And to be honest, because Trevor Milton was the founder of the company, it makes absolutely no sense for me for why people would criticize somebody like Mark Russell, who joined the company at the end of 2019, or just six months before the company went public, right? That is a very different stage to when the company was in 2015. And so a lot of the criticism against Mark really makes no sense. And now he also has obviously four children and he has a wife and he's getting into that retirement age that many people tend to retire at. And so for me, it makes a lot of sense as to why he's deciding to get out of the tech industry and leave it to Michael Woskiller, the president, to now lead the company. And to be honest, I think in the long term, this was actually the planned move from Nicholas Board of Directors. Steve Gursky, I think, hired Michael primarily for this reason, because he knew that at some point Mark Russell will have to retire and that at some point Nikola will have to completely revamp its management team at the very, very high level to be able to not only execute based on automotive experience, but also get rid of the past that has been darkened and obviously ruined by Trevor Milton. And well, that neatly brings us on to now addressing the credentials of Michael Loeskiller, who is going to be the future CEO of Nikola starting in 2023. Now, for those that are not familiar with him, this person has a lot of credentials in the automotive industry. As a matter of fact, when I first started investing in Nikola, I did say that one of my main drawbacks against this company was the fact 
that Mark Russell or Kim Brady didn't really have a lot of automotive experience on their resume. Instead, they had business experience managing other companies in the energy and tech industries, obviously like Worthington Industries, which as you can see right now is a $2.6 billion company that does around $5 billion in revenue annually. And as you can see, since 2012, the stock price has appreciated. So overall, the business execution of this company has been pretty good. But obviously, we know that the automotive industry is completely different, and it takes a completely different skill set to be able to scale manufacturing production, especially in the EV space. And Michael Loeskiller has some fantastic credentials. As you can see, he was officially the CEO of Vinfast in Vietnam, which is an electric vehicle startup which is selling cars in Europe and North America. And then prior to that, he was also named the manager of the year in 2019 when he was the CEO of one of the biggest brands in Europe, Opel. Opel is now owned by Stellantis, which is the same company that owns Fiat, Chrysler, and all those other businesses. And they are the top 10 manufacturer in the entire world by revenue. As a matter of fact, Opel itself has completely turned itself around and has been releasing amazing new products over the past 10 years that Michael Loeskiller has been leading the company. And that's a big reason for why he's an award-winning manager and has a lot of business experience. Because he also happened to be the CFO at Volkswagen at one point for five years and the CFO and business manager at Mitsubishi from 2001 to 2004. That is a very hefty resume that in my opinion, goes to show that Michael is the right person for this job for Nikola to be able to scale up production going into 2023. And that also brings us on to a very important concern that many people brought up initially last month or actually in February when Michael was initially announced as a president of Nikola, which is the fact that he actually left his previous company, Vinfast, just in four months after he was appointed as CEO. And to be completely honest, although I don't know exactly why he left the company so fast, I can speculate as to what the reasons could be. I think the first thing is that Vinfast is a Vietnamese company and Michael had to actually move to Vietnam to be the CEO of this company. And if I'll be completely honest, that part of Asia is not the most innovative part of Asia when it comes to manufacturing and scaling up. So potentially Michael saw some of the headwinds that somebody like Vinfast could be facing in the EV industry. And also because it's very far away from Europe, that's where all the innovation is taking place. And so that could have also played into his decision to leave Vinfast. And it's pretty clear that he does want to be in the EV space after he left his CEO role of Opel back in 2021. And so overall, I think there's some valid reasons for why he might have decided to leave his position at Vinfast. And after turning around a dying brand like Opel, I think Michael essentially just wanted a new challenge in the EV space, which is obviously where the new innovation is going to be taking place in the hydrogen and the electric places. And so overall, that's just my thoughts on why Michael Loeskiller would be replacing Mark Russell in 2023. Let me know down in the comment section below your guys' thoughts on the situation. I personally think it's bullish. I don't think it's a bad news at all. I think it does wipe away the past management team from Nicola's top throne, which for some people, it's going to be a very good thing. And it also brings in a whole lot of new experience from the automotive sector, from Volkswagen, Opel, and Mitsubishi.